Story Time with Grandma Coyote, every Monday of April, presented by the Cultural Arts Department of American Indians in Texas of the Spanish Colonial Missions, in association with the City of San Antonio Department of Arts and Culture and the Texas Commission on the Arts. Hey there, friends out there, Manuel Davila and Emma Ortega here. Today we're very happy to be reporting at the Institute of Texas Cultures, downtown San Antonio, to say our last goodbyes to an institution. Uh, it's been a little heartfelt for us. Uh, we've got decades and decades of memories here, uh, I'm sure like many San Antonians do. Uh, and so today we're just really reflecting, touring the space, really talking about the memories that we've built here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Grandma, you have decades of stories in this place. Um, tell me about that. Well, actually, my stories start before this building came to be because I lived in the area. Oh, that's beautiful. Our house, uh, in 1966, we had to move out because they tore down all the neighborhoods mm -hmm. so they could build uh, the hemisphere. So it goes before then. And then late, it came to it, took, took part in the hemisphere a lot. My son was little, uh, my husband, my son, and I. He was born in uh, 68, so Hemisphere, we were always here. And then later on, when Hemisphere went, we still kept coming as Native Americans because that's who we are. In my tribe, we're in Tom Apache, at Escarno, Carrizocomi Crudo. And we would perform in the Native American section mm -hmm. every Sunday. Unless we had a powwow or we had a ceremony or we had something to do, we let them know that we weren't going to be able to be here. So we were here like forever. And we did it about eight, nine years. Wow. And then another group wanted to be in here. So they went and said that they also wanted to take part because we let anybody, you know, we had a lot of Native friends from all different tribes come in. And they would take part with us on Sunday. We told stories. We had a drum. It was uh, two dancers. Uh, and then we had uh, white wolf singers with a drum. Katui dancers is the, uh, the, the group that Tomas started. And then I and then Gina and then a whole bunch of us. We were the first council. Sagna, San Antonio Native American Council was the first one. So it, we, we would come and, and perform. And Katu is mountain lion. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there used to be a lot more different tribes that would participate here. Yeah, at that time, it was the only tribe, the only group that was here. Mm -hmm. So friends of ours or other people that heard about the Institute would come on Sunday, and they would dance with us, and they would tell oh. stories, and they would sing. And sometimes they brought their drum. We had a big drum, and sometimes they brought theirs. So. In there to get two drums going, sometimes they would shoo us out here because <laughs> we were just way too, too loud, much ruckus, way yeah. too much loud, but we loved it. So we here in the halls out here, we would be drumming and we'd be dancing. Oh, I would love to hear it was, the acoustics in here. I would love oh to hear that God, sound just reverberating all the downtown. It was really, really a lot of fun. So today, walking through it and seeing, you know. It's just kind of empty in a way. And I'm asking, where's the buffalo? Where is this? Where is that? And some of the artifacts that are in there are the same ones that were here when we came <laughs> way back then. So, it, yeah, and it's sad to, to see it empty, and it's sad not to see the water running out here. And it feels like it's at the end of, of the era. Mm -hmm. It's ended. It's ended. It is. And the thing is, you can feel it. Definitely. You can feel it. Um, can't tell me that a building, the surroundings, don't have feelings because it's projecting oh, yeah. that loneliness. It's been absorbing these feelings and memories, yeah. so, you know, as people attend to make this place a living, a living place. And we were talking about that inside about how 
a building is just a building until you put people inside of it. Yeah. And that's really what makes this place a memorable place. You know, you living it up, lighting it up with your stories and music and making it a cultural space. You know. Yeah, because I also started the first altar for the other Los Muertos here. Mm -hmm. And did it for I don't know how many years until somebody else, another lady, wanted to to do it, and they came to me and asked me, said, "We don't know what to do, but she's really insistent. She wants to do it." I said, "She can do it." I said, "But she just better be ready to put up the money because you don't <laughs> do an altar cheap." And I said, "I realize y'all give me so much money, but it, a lot of it comes out of my pocket." Mm -hmm. So when I came uh, to see it. I said, well, how's the altar? He said, don't go. <laughs> don't go. I said, why? Because I really, I took a lot of time to find out what part of Mexico it came from, what are the customs, what are the colors, what are the history of the altar from the area, and that's what I would present. It was a cultural learning experience. And... Um, Hers was different. Not, <laughs> not to say anything else. I just say that hers was very different. Mm -hmm. And so I said, no, it's good. It's good. She made the attempt. That anybody tries something, that's, that's what part counts. of art, right? Yeah, that's putting the counts. intention, right? That's the a good way of thinking it, too. For it. So, yeah, this is, like I say, we had to, we lived in the area for since I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And we moved uh, up when I was about 20. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. These are your stomping grounds. This is this your are, original this neighborhood. Are the stomping yeah. grounds. These are. I I remember the the a very interest that was Goliath Street. The one from Alamo Street that you come in. Uh huh. That was Goliath Street. And some of the houses that were knocked down were beautiful three story, four three two story, three story homes. Gorgeous rock buildings. The walls were twelve inches uh, th wide, thick. But um, St. Michael's, I went to school there, so the church, church was knocked yeah. down too. And I always thought it would have made such a wonderful theater. Mm -hmm. Even for Hemisphere, it would have been a good theater. But yeah. that went too. Everything went. Yeah. So. Even what we see today here at Hemisphere is just like the, the bones of what used to be here. Mm -hmm. um, during the 1960s World Fair, you know, how they, I really feel like I missed out by not getting to see the man made lake they did here. And how they used to do the jet skis and the, the acrobatic uh, shows and uh, the monorail. The monorail. The I never... monorails. It, it, it was just so much. Hemisphere was unbelievable. It was beautiful. Um, you you couldn't. You turned around and there was something different, something mm -hmm. new all the time. All the new technology yeah. of the of the era. My grandpa still talks about the show that he got to see inside the federal building that they produced in there and how. Uh, he tells me, like, even at 12 years old, how that was, like, such a mind-blowing experience of having walls that moved and projections that, like, moved with you and um, told stories. And I feel like that really touched my grandpa in a number of ways, so. I love the uh, the Mexican section, the part from Mexico, because they brought in the voladores de papantla, the ones that come oh, the tall pole. around the stone oh, pole. They brought them there. They did the, dancers. They did the, the sacrifice. Uh, then they would do the aspect that came in with all their penachos, all the feathers, beautiful work. <laughs> the first year, well, uh, the first time that they performed the women, they were bare-breasted. Mm -hmm. So the people, the audience objected. Mm -hmm. So they had to cover themselves. But they did it how it would have been done uh, way back then, authentic. But the women, the people here objected to that. Mm -hmm. So they had to change their dress wear. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I loved it. It was, it was something so different. that It was like a temple being a ceremony done in a temple. Ah. Either Maya or Aztec and then the Olmeca heads. And I love that area. The Instituto Cultural Mexicano was and there was beautiful. I used to love that area all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and then then we had folk life. Ah, uh, yeah. Folk life festival. Was, once a year, we looked forward to that festival. Every all the pavilions that were everywhere, and and the different uh, na tribes, nationalities, cultures, races came to perform. Mm -hmm. I did storytelling in the back forty every time it came. 
I also emceed several of the, the performances of the dancers with the Native American. We had a group come in from uh, Dallas, I believe, the Brown family, and we had a group come in from the Alabama Pichada. I think those were the Johnsons. And we had different, different Native American mm -hmm. groups that came in all the time. Yeah, I know a number of families in San Antonio that they plan their year around Folk Life Festival because that was their, the family friendly version of Fiesta. And you knew you were going to have tons of great food and oh, it was okay. nice and safe. Yeah. Um, you were going to be able to like see very interesting people. You're going to see native people in the regalia talking to Germans in their traditional costume, uh, dancing with, you know, uh, people from Czechoslovakia at the same time. So you, it was visually it's something that you were not going to see anywhere else. I love the Lebanese, ah. the belly dancers. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to use it. And uh, it was funny because Gina did, uh, Gina, my daughter, my granddaughter, she's a fancy shawl dancer. So she did a performance and came off and, and the girls from India came on and did it. Well, next thing you know, and some Lebanese, and next thing you know, they're changing headgear and taking pictures with each other <laughs> in the different headgears and that. And it was a connection that it didn't matter where you were from. It just kids, girls mm -hmm. talking to each other and enjoying each other. Mm -hmm. And that was what was That's so kids great. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's where we start building bridges and just creating family moments mm -hmm. and showing people how we're a lot more alike than different. Yeah. <laughs> But to see those girls that, can I wear your crown? Yeah, can everybody wear mine? And so here's Gina dancing with one of the girls' different crowns and one of the, the other girls dancing with Gina's crown and that. It, it was really cute. It was really, really cute. And you just talk to everybody. I mean, they had so many things going on out here. Oh, so yeah. many things going on in there. You, it got too hot out here. You went into the middle and you laid down there and enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed the show up there. and. Just cooled off and ready to go back out again and start over again. I'm lucky enough that I only got to participate once, though, um, before Folk Life Festival ended. So I'm very grateful for that experience. Um, I got to perform and present here. Because um, I did feel like I was joining in on something that people had been doing for generations. Um, people were, like, telling me how their dads have been doing this since they were children. And now it's their turn to do it. And how mm -hmm. they're teaching their children to dance at Folk Life. It's like, wow. Um, here at Folk Life, this is, it definitely has inspired at least like three, four generations of dancers and musicians and storytellers to come back to the same space and share those talents. And that's really important because we like to promote San Antonio as such an art-filled city, but all of our artists here are working class Mexicanos, yeah. you know, just mom and dads just trying to put on a good time for the children. Um, so it's not like we have like a professional artist like a very heavy professional artist scene. It's more of like people trying to make happy experiences mm -hmm. for other people to enjoy. Yeah. Well, when we walked in, that lady that came up, Cherokee lady, came and hugged me right away. And so we we started talking, and uh, then we talk, I asked her, if you go, you go into the powwow Saturday, she said, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> so it's good to... That people still remember. Absolutely. That people still remember. Because. You got recognized as soon as we entered the building. Yes. People recognized you, so that was... A little local celebrity <laughs> with us today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the powwow Saturday. Uh, Gina, I remember one time, she had a little bitty thing. She's out here dancing. And so she started dancing at, uh, well, I brought her in real young at about one and a half. And she started performing. And like I said, she, she was about 18 till about then. That's when she stopped. About 17 when she finally said, I'm tired. <laughs> she was doing the performance here. She was also doing flamenco and folklorico. So she always had shows going. You somewhere. kept her busy. Uh, a big artist family. Yes. Uh, and uh, my son, you know, he was raised here because this is where we came to to bring him there. There was the best place to bring him over here, to he could see hemisphere yeah. and see everything that was going on. <laughs> oh, great times. Well, thank you so much for these reflections today, Grandma, and for joining us here at the, at the Institute of Cultures. Um, I'm very grateful that I got to share this experience with you of like saying goodbye to this place in this way. Uh, it was a little bittersweet, of course. Yeah. Um, but I'm very grateful I got to share this experience with you. And Me too. I'm glad. I mean, I know that a couple of weeks ago we did the, the solo part, 
Mm-hmm. And while I, that's who I am, I'm a storyteller and I can tell for hours. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. I'm so used to being with you. It feels so good that we're talking, we're talking to each other. And I love your clips episode. And, you did so wonderful. It, uh, it brings memories. It, you might say something that triggers a memory, something that I hadn't even thought about for so long. So I'm glad we're back together again. <laughs> Likewise. Me too. I'm always happy to be with you. And hopefully, folks, you've enjoyed our conversation today and you've been tagging on. Please check out all of our previous episodes available on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And as always, you can search all of our past episodes by searching Grandma Coyote. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Follow Grandma Coyote's wonderful work on all of her social media platforms. And as, uh, until next time, we bid you farewell. Yeah, and if you can, next second Saturday, try to make drumming with us. We had a oh, good time. It, uh, we didn't have a lot of people, but it was fiesta. So let's see what we can do in what. What trouble we can get into. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Storytime with Grandma Coyote. We look forward to seeing you next week. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and our Instagram.